Get ready for a hilarious journey into the tiny world of atoms where IBM made the world's smallest movie. This is roughly what an atom looks like if we could see it. Spoiler alert, we can't see atoms with regular eyes because they're ridiculously tiny. Let's start with the mind-boggling question. Just how absurdly small is an atom? A typical atom is about 0.1 nanometers wide. Now, what the heck is a nanometer? One nanometer equals 10 to the negative ninth meters. That's a decimal point followed by eight zeros and then a one. Here's where it gets funny. If we scaled up an atom to the size of a marble about one centimeter wide, the scale factor would be 10 to the eighth or 100 million times bigger. That means you would be 100 million times bigger, making you about 10,000 kilometers tall. You'd be bigger than Earth's diameter. You could literally step over the entire United States in one stride. Try not to step on anyone. Now let's talk about what IBM actually did with atoms and why it's both amazing and hilarious. In 2013, IBM scientists made a stop-motion animated movie using actual individual atoms as pixels. They used something called a scanning tunneling microscope, which sounds like science fiction, but is totally real. The scanning tunneling microscope has an incredibly sharp tip that can pick up and move individual atoms like a tiny atomic claw machine. Here's a fun calculation. Why do they need to cool everything down to do this experiment? At room temperature, atoms are bouncing around like caffeinated toddlers due to thermal energy. The thermal energy of an atom is 3 halves times Boltzmann's constant times temperature. Let's calculate at room temperature, 300 Kelvin. That gives us about 6 times 10 to the negative 21 joules of jiggling energy. This might sound tiny, but it's enough to make atoms zoom around at hundreds of meters per second. For a carbon atom, that's about 500 meters per second. Faster than the speed of sound. So IBM cooled everything down to about 5 Kelvin, which is minus 268 Celsius. Brr. At 5 Kelvin, atoms slow down to a gentle waltz instead of a frantic dance, making them much easier to manipulate. Now, for the really weird part, the microscope doesn't actually touch the atoms. The scanning tunneling microscope uses quantum tunneling, which is nature's way of saying, physics doesn't care about your rules. Electrons can literally tunnel through empty space like ghosts passing through walls. Spooky. The tunneling current is proportional to E to the negative 2 kappa D, where D is the distance. Here's the crazy part. If the tip moves just 0.1 nanometers closer, the current increases by 10 times. Electrons are jumping across the gap like tiny quantum hopscotch players, and that's how we know where the atom is. Let's calculate how much energy it actually takes to push an atom around on a surface. An atom sticking to a surface has a binding energy of roughly 0.1 to 1 electron volt. 1 electron volt equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So moving one atom takes about 10 to the negative 19 joules. That's incredibly tiny. But how tiny is tiny? Let's compare this to something we understand. The energy to lift one kilogram by one meter is mgh, which equals about 10 joules. That means lifting a one kilogram object one meter takes 10 to the 20th times more energy than moving one atom. With the energy to lift a chocolate bar one meter, you could theoretically move 100 quintillion atoms. That's a lot of atoms. The IBM movie is only about one minute long, but how long did it actually take to make? The final movie has 242 frames, each showing atoms in different positions. Each frame required carefully positioning dozens of individual atoms, which is like the world's most tedious game of atomic Tetris. Moving a single atom precisely takes anywhere from one to ten minutes because you have to be extremely careful. If each frame has 30 atoms and takes five minutes per atom on average, that's 36,300 minutes total. That's 605 hours, or about 25 days of continuous work. In reality, it probably took several months because scientists need to sleep occasionally and the equipment needs maintenance. Here's where things get really interesting. Could we use atoms to store data? Imagine if we could use one atom to represent one bit of information, a zero or a one. How much data could we cram onto a surface the size of a credit card? Let's find out. A credit card is about 85 by 54 millimeters, giving us 45 90 square millimeters of area. 
If we space atoms about 0.3 nanometers apart in a grid, we can fit about 280 million atoms along one side of the card. Squaring that gives us about 10 to the 17th atoms total, or 100 quadrillion bits. That's 12,500 terabytes. That's enough to store basically every movie ever made. Your credit card could hold more data than all of Netflix's servers combined? Well, theoretically, anyway. But wait, before we get too excited, let's talk about the absolutely ridiculous problems with this idea. Problem number one. Atoms absolutely love to jiggle around due to thermal energy, as we discussed earlier. You'd need to keep your atomic credit card at 5 Kelvin permanently. Try explaining that to your bank. The moment it warms up, atoms would scatter like teenagers when the pizza arrives. Problem number two. Remember how we calculated it takes five minutes per atom? To write all that data would take one billion years. The universe is only about 14 billion years old. Problem number three. A single cosmic ray particle hitting your card would be like a meteor strike, destroying huge chunks of data. Despite all these problems, why is this experiment still absolutely amazing? Just think about it. We live in a time where we can literally see and move individual atoms. A hundred years ago, some scientists still weren't sure if atoms even existed, and now we're making movies with them. From questioning whether atoms exist, to making stop-motion animations with them in just over a century. Mind-blowing. This experiment proves that quantum mechanics, as weird as it is, actually works in the real world. And it inspired an entire generation of scientists to push the boundaries of nanotechnology even further. Let's end with some more hilarious scale comparisons to really drive home how absurdly small atoms are. If you scaled an atom up to the size of a grain of sand, that's a scale factor of 10 million times. Then a regular grain of sand would be 10 kilometers wide. That's the size of a small city. You'd need a really big bucket for your beach day. Here's another fun fact. Atoms are so incredibly small that there are more atoms in a single glass of water. About 10 to the 25th atoms. Then there are glasses of water in all of Earth's oceans combined. Let that sink in. Let's wrap up this atomic comedy show with the key takeaways. IBM made the world's smallest movie by painstakingly moving atoms one by one like the world's most patient animator. It required temperatures colder than space, quantum tunneling, and more patience than waiting for your computer to update. Atoms are so ridiculously small that every time we try to describe them, the numbers become completely absurd. But the amazing thing is we can now manipulate matter at its most fundamental level which is both scientifically incredible and slightly terrifying. The future of nanotechnology looks microscopically tiny but enormously exciting. So next time someone tells you atoms are boring, remind them that scientists literally made a movie with them, and that's about as cool as physics gets.